In section 6.2, we'll look at inconsistent systems and dependent equations. So we're going to identify inconsistent systems, and then we'll solve other systems that have dependent equations. Let's take a look at example 1. Solve the system. 3x plus 4y minus z equals 9. 2x minus 3y plus 7z equals 17. And 7x minus 2y plus 13z equals negative 3. Let's use the reduced row operations uh, from the calculator to solve this matrix. So first, uh, let's go ahead and set up the augmented matrix. 3, 4, negative 1, 9, 2, negative 3, 7, 17, 7, negative 2, 13, and negative 8. Then we can use the calculator operations and come up with the reduced row echelon form. And then also change it to fractions so that we can get fractions as these numbers. We get 1, 0, 25 over 17, 0, 0, 1, negative 23 over 17, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Now it's this last row that is causing a problem. Remember that each row in the matrix can be turned back into an equation. If you take this last row and turn it back into an equation, you get 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1, but the entire left side is all zeros, so it's 0 equals 1. This equation makes no sense, and thus this system is inconsistent meaning that it has no solutions. So we have a system that's inconsistent, it has no solutions, and we revealed that by using the reduced row echelon form and finding a row that did not make sense. Let's look at example two. And it's basically the same system, except now the last equation ends in 43. So let's go ahead and create the matrix. So 3, 4, negative 1, 9, 2, negative 3, 7, 17, 7, negative 2, 13, and 43. And let's perform the reduced row echelon form on this one. And we'll get 1, 0, 25 over 17, 95 over 17, 0, 1, negative 23 over 17, negative 33 over 17, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. Again, we have a very strange last row. Remember one of the conditions for being in reduced row echelon form was that all rows that contain only zeros are found at the bottom. Well, here's one of those all zero rows. If we revert this back to an equation, we get 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. The left side reduces to 0 equals 0, and that's okay. So that's not a problem. Now what we start looking for are the leading ones. And so we look for the echelon with the ones, and and here is the one for the leading one on the row that would be the, the uh, variable for x because it's in the first column. So x has a leading one. Let's look for one in the second column. And yes, there it is right there. And so y has a leading one. And then the question is, does z have a leading one? Well, there's no ones in the last row or in the third column more specifically. And so z does not have a leading one. So no leading one for z. That means z is what we call a free variable. A free variable is one that's going to be allowed to take on any real value 
in the set of solutions. Now, to finish this problem up and find the set of solutions, we go ahead and we turn each of the rows that had a leading one back into an equation. So that first equation is 1x, there's no y's, plus 25 over 17z is equal to 95 over 17. The second row is 1y minus 23 over 17z is equal to negative 33 over 17. Next, we want to solve both of these equations for the x and the y here. So the first one solves for x. And that's going to give me 95 over 17 minus 25 over 17z. And the bottom equation gives me y equals negative 33 over 17 plus 23 over 17z. So now we have an expression for x and y, and now we can create the solution set. It's the set of ordered triples. Now remember, this would be in the form of x, y, and z, but we have an expression for the x, and so we put that in. 95 over 17 minus 25 over 17z. The y would be negative 33 over 17 plus 23 over 17z. The z coordinate is just z itself. And then we say such that, and remember that's that big vertical bar in the set notation, z is a real number. So we should note that because z is allowed to be any real number, we're going to have infinitely many solutions. So that means the system is consistent and the equations are dependent. Now also, let's take a look at some of the examples for solutions. So you create a particular solution by picking a value for z. So for example, when z is equal to 0, you just plug in z for the x and the y, and you would get 95 over 17, negative 33 over 17, and 0. And that ordered triple will satisfy all three of the equations uh, from the original system. Another one, you could let z equal 1, and you would get the ordered triple 72 over 17, negative 10 over 17, comma 1. And that's another triple. And in fact, there are infinitely many of these triples because z can be any real number. Let's take a look at example three. Solve the system. 2x minus y plus 8z uh, is equal to 1, and 3x plus 3y plus z is equal to negative 2. So let's create the augmented matrix. 2, negative 1, 8, 1, 3, 3, 1, negative 2. Now, the first thing I want you to note is that we have three variables, x, y, and z, but we only have two rows. So we don't stand a chance of getting a leading one for all three of the variables. We just don't have enough rows. So we're definitely going to have a free variable at the end of this. Use the reduced row echelon form. We get 1, 0, 25 over 9, 1 ninth, 
and then 0, 1, negative 22 over 9, and negative 7 over 9. So if we check for the leading ones, we have a leading one for x, we have a leading one for y, but again, there's no leading one for z. And so that means z is a free variable. You would again create the equations from the reduced row echelon form. We get x plus 25 over 9z is equal to 1 ninth, and y minus 22 over 9z is equal to negative 7 over 9. Solve these equations for the x or the y. So we get x is equal to 1 ninth minus 25 over 9z, and y is equal to negative 7 ninths plus 22 over 9z. Lastly, form the solution set. So it's the set x, y, and z. So the x would be 1 ninth minus 25 over 9z. The y would be negative 7 ninths plus 22 over 9z. And the z, of course, is z, such that z is a real number. So here we also note that we have infinitely many solutions. The system is consistent and the equations are dependent. Let's take a look at example four. So example four says solve the system x plus y plus z equals five, two x plus two y plus two z equals 10, and three x plus three y plus three z equals 15. So again, we create the matrix. We find the reduced row echelon form Now, in this reduced row echelon form, notice that we have two zero rows. When we go looking for the leading one, we only find one leading one, the one for the x. So that means both y and z are free variables. So let's write the one equation that we do have, x plus y plus z is equal to 5. We can solve that for x. We get x is equal to 5 minus y minus z. And then write the solution set. So the solution set would be the set of x, y, and z. So for the x, we get 5 minus y minus z. And then y is a free variable, so we just plug in y there for the y. And then z is also a free variable. And when we just state this at the end, y and z are real numbers. Now this is one way to write this particular solution. Another way that's... Uh, somewhat popular, is to go ahead and just write the ordered triple as x, y, and z, and then say such that, and then use the equation that came straight out of the matrix. So x plus y plus z is equal to 5. And then that tells the user that, you know, x, y, and z just have to be three numbers that satisfy the equation, 
where you add them up and you get five.